Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video, I begin by pointing out a certain lack of Kerbals in our Kerbinaut core. Uh, we do not appear to have Kerbals here. We've deployed all of them. Uh, they're out there. We are going to bring back the one scientist around Eve. That is something that we have a contract for. We did lose Melrick, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, we need to pick up some more Kerbals. I'm sure not going to pay for them when they cost 478000 a piece. So let's just take a look at what rescue contracts we have. We have Rescue Megan from Orbit of Kerbin. Well, that's easy enough. Uh, maybe we should expand this station uh, since, well, just rescuing a Kerbal around Kerbin is just going to be too boring. So fine, we'll pick up that contract. There's no catch here. The, it has six Kerbals, we need to expand it by five, and the normal stuff. I mean, the station already has antenna docking point and can generate power, but we'll probably add more of that. And so, yeah, that's fine. Um, rescue Kirstead from the surface of the moon. Well, we can't be picky. Uh, so, fine, a surface rescue it is. And unfortunately, that's not... Well, this Rescue Valney and Valney scrap from orbit of... Gilly. I mean, eventually, but I don't think I want to go back to Gilly so soon. We've done enough Gilly stuff, but we'll pick that up. And uh, I guess this other Gilly contract we can do at the same time. Okay. And a new orbital station. Around. I've got enough orbital stations around Eve. Uh, 11 Kerbals, mobile pro mobile processing lab we have one around eve already i'll just pass on that but science day from the surface of tylo they're not paying us enough for that uh but but then again it can be a probe that's not necessarily uh kerbal so all right that then we can do that val well if we're gonna go for tylo we might as well go for val but this one is orbital spacewalk so it's a little bit more complicated, though we get a decent sum just for orbiting it, and that doesn't require a Kerbal. The only thing that requires a Kerbal is the spacewalk. But yeah, let's pick that up. But first, uh, I want to bring back the scientists around Eve and then pick up some of these other Kerbals. The one around Kerbin and the one around the one, the one on the surface of the moon. We might want to do something about a moon base or something like that. Let's see, what kind of, uh, are they gonna tell me what they are? Well, Valney is a scientist. Kirsted on EVA on the moon is another scientist. And Megan's a pilot. So no engineers, unfortunately. And what we really need were engineers. We have in total right now, uh, one, two, three, four engineers. So that's not great. Okay. But let me time warp to the Eve to Kerbin transfer window and bring that Kerbal back. Okay, here is Phil Cell, and we are going to plot our way back from Eve to Kerbin. We're in a reasonably low enough orbit, and Kerbin is about 36 degrees ahead is what it needs to be. And so, I mean, it's not a really low orbit, but... At least it's circular. Okay, we're going around this way. We want to boost up in the direction of Eve's orbit. So that doesn't take too much since we're already in high orbit. And since it's circular, there's no benefit to being on one side or another. So to line up with the purple line there. Well, there's an inclination difference. We could sort of meet up with it there if we manage it right. Since Kerbin is going to be doing the braking for us, we don't have to bother too much about coming in fast. We will be coming in fast. We only have 100 units of a blader. I guess it'll be alright. We're coming in fast because we're overshooting Kerbin here. Well, we are carrying plenty of fuel for this. We could probably slow down a bit when we get to Kerbin. Okay, for now, a Kerbin periapsis of 32 kilometers, so we wait 13 hours for that. Uh, well, uh, I don't know if this is new, but keep and take. 
Okay, time to depart Eve. And go. Okay, well, we have an encounter at least. It's not a bad periapsis for the initial burn. I don't think we need another correction. So, okay. I'm just gonna follow it out to there. Other than the contracts we picked up, we have a recover a component from Orbit of Kerbin. We might do that while recovering Megan and doing the the station expansion, so it'll be a combo of those. We've got a Ike contract that's just sort of sitting off to the side there. Okay, we are in Kerbin SOI. We're still a little bit high over Kerbin, so we'll do a minor correction here. 20, oh, that's the wrong way around. Yes, that's the wrong way around. Uh, we want 26 kilometers. That's our magic number. It seems to work pretty well for everything. We're gonna use what fuel we have to slow down a bit while trying to maintain that periapsis. Well, we've actually already captured and brought it down to a lower than moon orbit with that fuel. I'll just leave it be now. Okay. Normal. And separation. Separation. It's possible we could have just come back down with the trunk, but then the parachute has to deal with everything. There is some mountainous risk here. We've got some mountains to the left of us there. Had some mountains behind us. You can see the rugged terrain behind us. I can't quite make out the details in front of us. I just know that there's rugged terrain off to the left because of, I guess, snow-capped peaks. There's definitely more snow-capped peaks in front there. But I think we're going to land short of those. That seems level enough. Okay, fill cell is down and recover. All right, well, now we have a level two scientist for what it's worth. I guess we have some science that I haven't deployed yet. Might as well find a place for it. Uh, we can get the big tanks, heavy uh, wheels and grip pads and all, ion thrusters. I'm not too hot on that stuff. Well, let's get the big tanks. Okay. Anyway, let me work up a mission to do the Kerbin Orbit stuff first. Okay, so this is our combination mission. We've got a cabin in order to rescue the Kerbal we need to rescue. We've got a heat shield to protect the component that we have to retrieve. And we've got some ant engines to deorbit and RCS, of course, for the approaches, well, especially for the component. The Kerbal can just get into the cabin, that's fine. Uh, but the component we need to uh, bring back is fairly large. Um, well, right now, because it is connected, I guess we can't deploy that heat shield. But yeah, it's about 5 meters in diameter, though flat. So that's at least a saving grace. But yeah, so that's the recovery part. And then this is the station module that I want to add. We need at least a capacity of four or five Kerbals, and so we've got that. But I wanted more docking um, ability, especially with the large docking ports. We don't have those on there right now. And we didn't actually have a cupola on it, I think. So we've got that. Uh, some extra antennae just in case, uh, some thrusters for Delta V. But one thing I need to check is that we, uh, our Kerbal that we need to rescue is actually in a low orbit. We need to double check that. Otherwise, we need more Delta V on, uh, on that segment. So then I've put the probe core for the launcher here because yes, we're gonna try and recover it. We've got the parachutes actually on this platform and the reaction wheel here seem the best place to put it. I thought about putting it at the bottom, but that wasn't as good. Of course, we need a fairly big fairing to cover this. And the core is just these Bobcat engines. And this is a very similar uh, setup to the Phoenix rocket that we had much earlier. Except we have larger boosters now. We're using the Pollux boosters thrust limited to 70% and They're thrust limited so that we don't have too low a thrust weight ratio by the time we get to just the core, but uh, and 
act, uh, if you take a look at the vacuum thrust weight ratio is close to one. So yeah, that's that was the goal there. We have way more delta V than we need for this payload. So that's good. Uh, this might be a good launcher if things work out, right? And I'm going to auto strut a few things. I have not done that. I'll go with heaviest part. We'll see how that works out for us. That's already on root part. And I'll put this one on root part two. And these should be on grandparent part. Okay, so that's the idea. I haven't named the launcher yet. It might be Phoenix 3. I mean, it's just a bigger Phoenix in a way. But let me save and let's check out where things are. So we want Megan. And it's just a Megan, not Megan's pod, I believe. Yeah, save Megan from orbit of Kerbin, and Megan is in fact in a low orbit, and the component that we need is this component, which is also in low orbit, so no problems. We are not going very far with this. I thought about just bundling the moon mission into it, but that's, we've already got three things going on in low Kerbin orbit. I don't need that as well. So the first thing we need to do is get to the station, because we would like to drop off that module onto the station first. So that is our target, and let's go ahead for daylight. The launcher's antennae, by the way, are just down here, so... I just put them on the side. I could have put them inside there, though. I, th I put them on the side down there because I was going to put the core down there. Okay, the silverish fairing that isn't super silver. Anyway, SAS on, throttle is up, and... Well, maybe I should wait a little bit longer for the station to be right behind us. That'd be better. Okay, and... Launch. Oh, throttle up. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, it's because I time warped again. I said SAS on throttle up, and... Then I magically forgot to do that after... after time warping. We actually need these separatrons at the same time as the boosters. Okay, booster set. Okay, they are off. A little bit of a turn to them. Must have misplaced one of the separatrons a bit. Well, fairings. Okay, well, there's an intercept forming up there near its apoapsis. Okay, so we'll go once around and get over to there. Well, that'll have to be close enough for now. Alright, uh, we are in orbit, so the launcher can separate and do its own business. And that seems like a good staging to me. So this side can RC us forward. And it'll... oh, uh, we might as well uh, get some solar panels out. Okay, so now trying to return this. Now it's got a lot of fuel left. We were in a lopsided orbit, so it's a bit complicated. Maybe we should try to be closer to the KSC and then use the fuel to a retro to correct as necessary. just burn all of our delta V. I mean, we've pr pretty much got orbital velocity worth the delta V here. So... We could just wait until we're like right overhead of the KSC and retro. No, that's probably not a good idea. Well, actually it could probably work too. Yeah, we might not even be in the atmosphere by the time we get there, so I'm gonna use more. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and activate the RCS here, those burner engines. And I figure we can just retro burn to come straight down now. Okay, a bit of an overshoot is probably good for drag. Uh, 
it does look like we're being pulled in too much, so I'll retract the brakes. No, I can't. I guess we're going to be short. Okay. And recover. All right, well, we got the core back, for what it's worth. 24,000 funds. Okay, now to manage that rendezvous. We seem to have drifted further away. I thought we were closer than 12 point... Uh, maybe we missed the initial encounter? Because we were returning the vessel, I suppose. Um, let's see. So I'm doing a bit of a radial burn to correct the fact that we drifted away from it. Okay. Well, we're approaching rather quickly. So this station was in the form of, shall we say, a wet workshop kind of deal? Because it's got a huge fuel tank, but really it's still just a huge fuel tank. It hasn't been converted to anything else. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to have these sort of in line with the other body. So we'll have sort of twin hull, a twin hull sort of situation. And I want to dock there, which is on the fuel tank. And I want to dock using this port. I mean, we could dock it end to end. Well, no, I think that docking port up there is a small one. It's a uh, Clampatron Junior, so so no, we can't. Uh, okay, so that's how it is, and we can dock other modules here, like maybe a science lab. I don't know if a science lab is really useful around Kerbin at all, but. For now, that's that's all that has to be there, and we've got this cupola here, and we want to make sure. Um, I didn't really put a supplementary antenna on here, so hopefully the internal antennae are good enough. We'll find out momentarily. So, mm, decouple and change vessel. Well, it's good for now. So now, first thing is to pick up Megan. I've just realized I forgot parachutes. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I forgot parachutes. And we don't have an engineer around. Ah! Uh... How did I forget parachutes? Gosh darn it, I put parachutes on the launch vehicle. Hmm. Well, we've got a problem. We should store parachutes on the <laughs> on the station, just in case. Oh my god. Well, good thing I didn't try to re-enter first. Still, we'll grab our Kerbal first. No point. Yeah, we'll just grab the stuff and then we'll figure out how to get parachutes to it before we re-enter. So I think what we'll do is we'll have a crew pod that will dock to the station and the crew pod, we need to hire an engineer, I guess. I'm not going to bring one back from another planet in order to do this. So we'll hire an engineer. We're in desperate need of them anyway. And then we'll slap some parachutes onto this with the engineer. Or we could claw the, well, two claws, geez. Hmm. That sounds dangerous, two claws on the same vessel. But we could claw a parachute to it. A mini claw. Or we don't even have to send the claw. But but we do, because the claw will already be occupied by the component, right? Well, it'll save us money if we don't have to hire the engineer, so. Okay. All right, Megan. Megan is in fact a pilot, which we no longer have need of these days. Uh, okay, and off goes Megan. I mean, unless they require us to put four pilots on a station like they did with that Gilly station, then we need pilots. Okay, time to get that component. It is behind us. Also in the low orbit. So... Let's just 
boost up again and let it catch up to us. It's, so yeah, that's the easiest way to go. I hope we're not bumping into the pod. Nope. I probably carried too much more propellant. Especially since I'm using the weaker RCS ports. Yeah, I guess that'll have to do. Alright, we've got it. And now we're gonna have to send a claw up with some parachutes. And then we can bring this business back down. This will be a little bit off center here. We'll see how that works out for us. Okay, well, I've gone for a minimalist approach, especially since I want to make sure that the parachutes are safely protected by the inflatable heat shield. But given previous attempts at going for a minimalist approach, this might not be the best idea. Not haven't had a good history with uh, this particular way, but anyway, we've got the Minimal Claw, the Advanced Grabbing ju Unit Junior. We've got a Octo 2 here and a battery, and we do not have solar panels or anything like that. I mean, we could bring it back, but I just wanted to keep things very tight. We don't have a reaction wheel. The Octo 2 doesn't have a reaction wheel, so we'll have to use the RCS for that, and uh, so I'll have to be very careful with the monopropellant. Uh, and then we have two parachutes, which is what I figured would be necessary to bring the payload down safely, hopefully. Anyway, uh, and then we have a rocket. The rocket is, uh, there's a terrier, there's two sparks for control, it's not sparks, uh, twitches for control, and then for the first time I'm using these shrimp boosters. So the shrimps and the twitches will start off and they give a thrust weight ratio of 1.37 at sea level, and then the Terrier will kick in to uh, bring us to orbit. It's possible we don't even need the Terrier, um, given how this is. If I took it off, you know, maybe that's best. That'll be cheaper even. That's even cheaper. Now, I'm not putting any decouplers for the, for the shrimps. You know, we're not separating off those boosters because, honestly, that would be more right? That would cost more, and we'll lose that money anyway. I wonder if, thinking about it, this is probably a bad idea. <laughs> um, what I'm about to do is probably a bad idea, but okay, so if we're gonna remove the terrier there, I can remove the nose cones and maybe hide these under here. I don't know if that would actually hide there. Well, at least it's cheap. Anyway, um, hide their top node, I mean. Maybe that'd be okay? And shoot, while we're at it, let's just move these down. I'm holding down shift. For those who don't know, you can hold down shift and move them quite a ways. So then we can make it like that. But is that gonna cause us stability problems? Hmm. Probably. <laughs> I mean... Oh gosh, I keep making things bad. Okay, well, this is, I might want to go back to the original idea. I'll call this Minimal Claw 2. I mean, it's got the Delta V. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I wanted to target our target and get their not current station ship. That's the actual station. It's actually Kerbin Station Ship Lander, which is weird. Oh, it's right in front of us? Oh, it's right behind us. Okay, well, we should go now. Okay, SAS on, Thrall is up, and, well, power is wasting. And go! This is an extra special rocket. I didn't check the thrust weight ratio after the boosters stopped, though. What is the thrust weight ratio? Thrust weight ratio after the booster stop. Whoops. Okay, do the twitch engines have enough? I don't know. I don't think so. Whoops. I think it's only good if there's a terrier. I did not think about things properly. And we're going back down. Well, you know what? We have a way to deal with this. 
We will not be losing this. Okay. Uh, flop and recover. Well, not that much harm done. Let's uh, let's go with the terrier this time. Of course, we're lining it at a higher level, but I think it's necessary. In fact, it's useless on the ground and until it gets to a decent altitude. But we'll be lighting it at a better altitude anyway. Okay, very different situation. Unfortunately, the lander is well ahead of us now, but we'll go anyway. Throttle up and launch. I'll be interested to see what kind of ISP we start out with here. By the time we ignite it when the boosters stop. Okay, Terrier ignition. Uh, 240-ish, 250-ish, but it's going up, of course. It's not the worst. Just trying to turn now. We did a straight-up kind of thing initially. Not, not a good approach, but potentially a necessary approach. I like the plumes on the twitches. Okay, fairing set. Boy, those went off in a hurry. We do sort of have to watch out for comms, though. Because we don't have an additional comm thing. Let's just try and make orbit as much as possible here. That's way above, but at least still guarantee something. Let's wait a bit. And maybe it's for the best, so we'll let the lander catch up on the flip side. Uh, that's probably good enough. Okay, well, we don't want to waste the uh, RCS now. Uh, what I want to do is bring the stage back down, just dump it into the atmosphere once we get to Apoapsis. Uh, well, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Well, we'll see. Okay, well, that will dispose of the stage. The question is whether we have enough Delta V with the little claw thingy to do the rest. Well, arm the claw. How heavy is this, incidentally? 0.38 tons. Okay, returning to orbit. Okay, we're getting further away from the target there, and we are barely in orbit right now, so it'll be good enough. The question is whether we actually have comms when we meet up with the target. The space center is right there. Uh, well, one good thing about using RCS for everything is that you're not going to overburn. I think. It's not going to keep the RCS on when you lose connection. Here, let's try and rendezvous here. Oh, we lost connection. No, well, we missed it this time. Okay, okay, okay. Well, let's see if we have communications over there now. Our uh, periapsis is a little bit low, though. Um, let's just boost that up a little bit more. Okay, I just don't want to be in the atmosphere. Okay, we do have comms. All right, let's see if we can adjust that again. Uh, no, we can't. Okay, we'll take what we can get then. What? 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 Why? 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 Oh, we lost com comms. Ah, uh, everything's drifting away again. And we're running out of fuel here. I think it's time for the other object to help. It's got 225 meters per second. That should be enough to do stuff. Okay, we have a base right under us, so that's good. Alright, let's get this done quickly then. Finally. Okay, it's not going to be perfectly centered or anything, but there we are. Well, 
two claws on a part, but I guess we'll see. All right, now we need to deorbit. I would like to, we're right over to KSC right now. We want to deorbit such that we might hit it. So let's do that over here. Okay, ants. Ooh, that's uh, more off-center than I thought it was, actually. We'll leave the RCS on in the hope that it can help stabilize us. Well, Megan's in an interesting pickle. And we are inflating the heat shield, not decoupling. <laughs> Almost said decouple. Okay, well, it looks convincing in terms of being able to cover things. All right, let's see what we've got. Now it's using some RCS to hold things. Oh, but I'm on caps lock. Doesn't seem to change much. Uh, it's not using all of its authority, so that's okay. And we're decelerating pretty well. We are right beyond the KSC. We still need an engineer, though. That would be useful. Might have to look into bringing somebody back. And I also want to begin our debris, debris retrieval stuff with a shuttle. Oh, this is going to take a while to get to the surface. But we also have that Kerbal on the Moon. Unfortunately, that Kerbal on the Moon is not an engineer. Maybe they'll give us another contract for a Kerbal Rescue who happens to be an engineer. That would be nice. And, well, 8.5 meters per second is what we're down to. I'm going to turn off the RCS now. I was trying to lighten it up by letting the RCS run, but... We should survive 8 meters per second. Okay, and... Splash down. Looks floatable. I sure hope it would float. Uh, oh no, uh, uh, recover, recover. It went a little bit below zero, so I was nervous. We don't want any sinking. Okay, so no science. We got some funds and Megan. And we got those two contracts complete the components and getting Megan back. So. Now, let's just quickly check for contracts. Pilot and scientist is what we have right now. Any more? Well, recover Luton and Luton's scrap from orbit of the moon. Maybe. Could Luton be a... Can we check whether Luton's an engineer first? No. We have to accept it and then it'll tell us. Okay, well... We're going to the moon next time anyway, so let's pick it up. Though, you know, the scrap could be annoying. It's a Mark II cockpit. And Luton is a scientist. Jeez. Alright, so Luton and Kirstead we need to pick up from the moon. One in orbit and one on the ground. But we have, also have to get the cockpit. I might need to develop that shuttle after all, uh, just to bring stuff back properly. We'll see. We'll see what I do next time. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.